In Cambodia, the contribution of floodplains to income, employment and food security is higher than in any other country. However, the natural productivity of the Tonle Sap's floodplains may be threatened if the flood pulse, the temporarily submerged habitats and the migration routes of the Tonle Sap are not given proper attention. Typically, infrastructure development projects have one main clear goal. For instance, improving access to remote villages or storing river water for irrigation. However, focusing on only one sector in order to maximize its outputs may compromise the needs of other sectors. That is why many development decisions result in trade-offs in which positive aspects and negative aspects needed to be understood and weighted. The true costs and benefits of infrastructure projects are often difficult to evaluate. Finding a balance and optimizing design for a better global output is a challenging exercise. Built structures consist of a diversity of man-made structures that contribute to changing the hydrology of natural systems. Built structures include structures that oppose water outflow, for instance, dams, irrigation schemes, or to prevent water inflow such as dikes, polders, and embankments. Build structures can also modify water flow, for example roads and canals, or degrade water quality like sewerage systems or mines. Roads on floodplains, for instance, are almost always associated with dikes. They facilitate social exchanges, but also result in floodplain fragmentation and loss of habitat for fish. In October of 2005, the Cambodian National Mekong Committee project was proposed to the Kingdom of Cambodia in order to study the influence of built structures on the fisheries of the Tonle Sap. This 10-month project, funded by the Government of Finland, started in May 2006. The goal of the project is sound management and conservation of natural resources and biodiversity in the Tonle Sap Basin. More specifically, it aims at improving awareness of the influence of built structures on the lake's hydrology and natural resources. The executing agency of this project is the Cambodian National Mekong Committee, with technical contribution from the Inland Fisheries Research and Development Institute and guidance from the Tonle Sap Biosphere Reserve Secretariat. Three study sites reflect a diversity of build structures around the Tonle Sap. These study sites are Stung Chinit in Kompong Tom province, Prek Tol at the mouth of Stung Sange in Badambong province and Krakor district in Pusat province. Prektol is located on the northwestern shore of the lake. It is a core protected area of the Tonle Sap Biosphere Reserve. The protected area is paradoxically part of the biggest fishing lot in Cambodia. This fishing lot number two is reputed to have the most abundant harvest of all fishing lots. Four villages are located inside the lot and all villagers are primarily fishermen. The rest of the Sankor River is bordered by several other fishing lots, but also by former lots released to fishing communities constituting a patchwork of social groups and situations in an intensive fishery context. Prektol is a major conservation hotspot 
as it hosts the largest breeding colonies of large water birds in Southeast Asia and other mammal specimens. The study site in Pusat illustrates the influence of roads on socioeconomics and floodplain ecology. The site selected is in Krakow district, east of Pusat city. It consists of two track roads within the floodplain. These roads allow an analysis of the influence of such structures on fisheries and livelihoods, either from a spatial perspective by comparing the inside and outside of the area protected from flooding, or from a temporal perspective by comparing the area before and after the construction of a road. Stonchenet is one of the major tributaries of the Tonlesat Basin. This is also a site where, since 2001, an irrigation scheme has been developed. The scheme is located in Kompong Tom province, about 100 kilometers upstream from the Tonlesat Lake. It is located along the Chinit River, which flows southwards to the lake. A large weir has been built across the river, and fish migrations are likely to be impacted, though a fish pass has been built as a mitigation measure. The key question in infrastructure development is, how can we maximize returns and minimize negative impacts on natural resources and local communities? This question requires a multidisciplinary approach, since hydrological modifications influence the environment and aquatic resources which in turn influence socio-economic patterns and the livelihoods of rural people. Integrating these different perspectives requires the trade-offs be well documented, so that decision makers can be informed and balanced management decisions made.